guys, my name is Mannequin and welcome back to Mastering EDM with Logic Pro. So I still have a cold, but we'll just have to deal with it. So this is the second video in my series um, introducing synth design. And um, so what I'm going to cover today is what's called envelopes. These are really confusing if you just kind of jumped into a synthesizer and you had no idea what they are. So uh, I'm not going to use ES2. I'm actually going to use something else because um, it's really in, it's really like it makes a lot of sense if you see it from here. So I popped open Retro Synth here. This is a built-in synthesizer in Logic. I don't know if it's new or not. It kind of looks new, but I'm not going to find an initialized preset. I'm actually going to manually. So I turned off the filter here, and I just kind of am changing this to do what I want it to do here. So filter envelope. Just reset all this stuff, kind of. Okay. So now what we should have is. Um, Make that not dependent on velocity. There we go. It's just a saw, people. So um, so that's all it is. And you can tell, like, when I hit the note and let go, it just starts and stops. That's simple. So what does an envelope do? An envelope is basically like um, you get the uh, the 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 volume in the case of the the amp envelope. And um, you kind of follow a path depending on the actions that occur. So I'm going to show you first attack because it's the easiest one to get. So I'm going to slide this over and this is where it, it is when we press the note. So if you look at first, it starts at here and then instantly shoots up to full. That's what happens when we push this, press the note. It just goes to full volume and stays there. And then it drops back down when we let go. But I'll talk about that more in a second. So attack, what is attack? It basically just follows this path here to the amount of the volume level and uh, so you press it and then it takes 140 milliseconds to go up to maximum volume and um, so what this what this sounds like is pretty simple it just fades in which is kind of what you would expect so next thing is release uh, release here is when I let go, how long does it take to fade out? So it's going to start immediately, we can tell because it's like that, and then it's going to fade out when I let go. So that's very important. I let go, and I'm not pressing it still, and it's going, it's got like, it's supposed to run for like 5.6 seconds. So that's why it's taking us long to fade out, but let me just put that back there. So that's attack and release. So. Attack is when you uh, when you start it. How long does it take for it to you know go to the maximum volume level? Release is once you release it. How long does it take to go away? Those are the easy ones. Now for the hard ones because they're interconnected. So we have two things: decay and sustain, and they are interconnected here. So sustain is um, um, should I do sustain or decay first? It's kind of it's kind of they're, they they go for the same thing. So it's kind of hard to do it in order here. But um, so we'll I guess I'll start with decay. Decay is how long it takes once you get to the maximum volume level, you automatically start going back down. But how much do you go down? That's This is sustain. Decay is how long. Sustain is how much. So right now we have sustain at full. So it doesn't matter what the decay is because once we go to the maximum volume level, it it's not going to go down. It's just going to stay up there. If the decay is 10 seconds, if it's zero seconds, it's going to stay at the maximum volume level. But if I pull the sustain down, you can tell the sustain is changing at the bottom there. Then, um, then what happens is it goes to the maximum volume level. The instant it gets to the maximum volume level, not when you release. When you release, that's release there. Um, when it gets to the maximum volume level, it starts to go down. How long does it take? 1.4 milliseconds because that's our decay. How much does it go down? Well, it goes down to 0 0.42. I don't know what this is in because I don't think it's in percentage. Uh, maybe it is, except for it's not linear because like right here is 80 and that's like 50. So anyway, whatever. But this is how much it goes, how far it goes down. Sustain is how far it goes, how far the decay goes down. So, um, so like, let's see. Um, so I'm going to change the release to zero. So it's going to fade in here and then I'm going to have it, um, then I'm going to have it fade back out while I'm still holding it. So it'll fade in and fade out, but that's where we release it. So despite the fact that I'm going to keep holding it, it's gonna, still going to fade out. This is what it sounds like. I'm still holding it, by the way, from that second time I pressed it. So I'm going to press it again. Still holding it. So it's not the release. The decay 
starts immediately after you get to the maximum position. So that's envelopes. And the reason I use this is because normally if you have ES2, let me just actually, let's create a new track. Um, if I switch to ES2 here, um, you'll notice attack, decay, sustain, and release. These are all just sliders and it's really, you have no idea what's going on there. So the reason I chose to use um, retro synth here is because it really, it's a graphical representation of what's going on. So fade in and then f f after it fades in, how long does it take to go down? How much does it go down? And then release, same. So what does this sound like? And then I let go and it fades out, sweet. So this is pretty much envelopes in a nutshell. Now you can, um, envelopes are not just limited to volumes. In the case of a filter envelope, here let me turn on the filter and I'm gonna turn this, uh, turn the envelope so it's using maximum. So this is how much the, uh, the envelope affects the filter here. And then I'm gonna pull this down all the way to the bottom so the lowest point that the filter can go to is the lowest point. So filter envelope here, what's happening? Exact same concept. How much do we open up the filter? And at this point, it just shoots up to full. So it shoots up to full. And then when we get here, it shoots back down. So that's our release here, you can tell. So that means that it'll stay at the maximum until we let go. So what does this sound like? Oops. Why is it not affecting it enough? Oh, here we go. This right here is how much the, uh, it's affected by the key here. Maybe not. Oh goodness. Maybe I need to change it to zero. There we go, that's what I was looking for. So actually I'm just gonna set this back to how it was so it's instant start, instant stop. So this is what it sounds like. Oh my goodness. I put those the wrong direction. I was hoping that it wouldn't affect, the, the velocity wouldn't affect the sound, but. There we go, that's what I wanted. Okay, so um, you can't hear anything with the on and off. Well, you kinda can just because it's a low pass filter, so. Whoopsies, that's not what I wanted. Um, zero, yeah. Um, so you can't really, if I have this one up to the maximum, and then if I turn it off, you can tell that the low pass filter does do something just because it's on, even if you have it to theoretically do nothing. But, so what do we do when we do work with the filter here? So if I bring this all the way back down to the bottom, this will make it open up the filter slowly and then just stay there. whoop de doo That was easy. Exact same thing as the amp envelope, except for this time we're just controlling a filter. And then I'm gonna have it release, except for I first need to have release on the amp uh, envelope because otherwise it'll just stop the audio even though the filter goes down. So I need to have them both have release. And I let go and it goes back down. That's actually a pretty cool sound. So if, I, if you do something like this, like a, a short attack, and then have it go back down, you go. Let's make it a little longer. So that's pretty cool. And if I pull up the, wow, that's got a really long release. If I pull that up, it'll sound even more interesting. So you can already tell between what we learned in the last video, which was waveforms. Like we could create a really weird synthesizer just from you know, just from learning how to use a filter and connecting it to um, and connecting it to an envelope here. So we have the amp envelope, filter envelope. We're just using those two, and then basic waveforms. And that's essentially you know all we're doing. And yet we created this rather interesting synthesizer. So I'm gonna try something really cool here. I'm gonna make it so it autom it like it shoots up to maximum volume, and then as soon as it gets to maximum volume, it goes down rather quick. This will create a plucking sound. And it's more prominent if I let that, if I let this set the, there we go. Now if I do the same thing to the filter, doo -doo -doo, of course that doesn't work as well. There we go. That just kind of sounds like a kick drum. Yeah, it's not doing what I want it to do. There we go. There's my pluck. So really, that's that's all we've learned in the past two videos of synth design. And you just have to, you know, you kind of learn the sounds 
Um, so that's how I was able to get that sound after only a couple tries. But um, but yeah, you do kind of learn the sounds of um, you know what you're doing. So uh, but yeah, you can look at these to kind of understand what's going on. But when you get into ES2, you don't have these anymore to look at. So you kind of have to know what you're doing when you're changing the attack, decay, sustain, and release. So my suggestion is really, really just like experiment with them, get to know them. And uh, that's, that's kind of everything when it comes to production. You need to experiment with it and get to know it. And, um, and you know, then basically that's how you master um, all these tools and stuff like that. So, you know, you can have the head knowledge, but until you actually start to get to use it, it won't be like something ingrained into you that you could just create what you want right off the bat. Anyway, uh, I'm just going to end this video here because it's probably gotten long enough. So, uh, I don't want to go over, but it's kind of, it's kind of hard to make these shorter because I think 10 minutes is a reasonable length. Um, if I, if I try to do like seven or eight minutes and it starts to get like where I'm talking really fast and I'm not putting enough information on it. Feels like I don't really talk about anything. But anyway, thank you for watching. If you liked it, like the video. And if you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing. And because uh, I got a lot more stuff coming, coming your way. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.